let's get this party started hello everybody hello welcome to your journey yeah it's good yeah it's good okay. it's good it's not uh okay flashing okay flashing. so we're good hello everybody this is welcome to your journey this is basically a podcast about this human experience this human life and everything that comes with it whether it's the emotions the mental the the physical baggages or joyful events um it's basically like yeah. us on our journey so we're we we discuss from our human experiences mm. we're not experts or whatever that means <laughs> i love how to point that out <laughs> we're, today. Ju we're just like speaking from our our personal experiences so, and we just wanted to have other people tag along on yeah. our journey, on our experiences. And we want and to stress that today. Yeah, because, we do. Uh, and so th this week we haven't even talked about, we're talking about grief. <laughs> <laughs> grief is, uh, encompasses a lot of things, right? Grief yeah. is the ending of a physical vessel. It's the endings of a journey. It's the ending of a relationship. It's the ending of, it could be a job even. It could be the end of a situation, an event in your life. And it's the beginning of something new ending of a pattern too, an ending of an old self, an old way of thinking, an old way of being to enter a new way of being, a new way of thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So grief is a pretty loaded one as every ev episode we've done so far. But yeah. yeah, what do you think? How do you, how's your experience been with grief? Like, well, well, Sabrina? <laughs> <laughs> the reason we're doing this episode is we've always wanted to do this episode yeah. but this one like was triggered or came about by a recent event of course because that's what we're on this journey that has happened to sabrina just today it was just something coming up like an old friendship I, I, I didn't think it was an old one but it was a friendship that came up um there was grievances within the friendship that was expressed to me. And at the moment, my ego played a role in it. Like instantaneously, I was a little bit hurt by the words. But um, the way I acted, the way I reacted actually was more evolved than I would, would have maybe a year ago. Mm. So I was... Um, it's like uh, right now I'm in the grieving process of it. So I'm in the process of grieving that friendship. Hence the episode. Hence the episode. <laughs> but I am no stranger to grief. And as is many of you that are watching, hmm. many of us have lost a lot of uh, people, like uh, significant people in our lives. And uh, grief is something that shows up uh, on the regular even if you've lost someone when you were very young, it could even be a pet that you lost, a dog, a cat. And it's, it's grief is, comes in many stages. You know, mm -hmm. I remember when I, my sister uh, left the earth, I had, I went to grief, grief, grief counselor. And they told me about the five st stages of grief, which is, I had to write them down to remember denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. Mm -hmm. But some people, um it you don't necessarily step one is not necessarily the first thing that you feel right when you're grieving and that's like the same yeah. you, you can take these five st stages in 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 more than just the human being like that you lost in the job that you lost in the in the friendship that you lost in the situation right we all go through these kinds of stages 100 percent. and that's the thing right with grief we always think that it has to, somebody has to die somebody has to leave this earth to actually feel grief but it the, it's so much more grieving to me has always, not always recently has been the ultimate letting go, the ultimate letting go of people, place or thing, or even the shoulds, the coulds, the woulds, everything. How I fully experienced grief was in my last relationship when I realized when it was ending, when officially we ended it after five years and I would even say the relationship was pretty much kind of over even a couple of years back, but the official acknowledgement of it, the full circle, the actual, you know, that dot on the eye made me realize how much grieving is. It's really layered because I didn't only grieve the relationship, but I grieved 
all the potentialities of it. So I grieve the possibility of having a child with this person. I grieve the possibility, mm-hmm. you know, so I've technically grieved that child that I never had, but the po- the potential of that child, right? So that was something I had to grieve out, the possibility of all the, all the things that we said we were going to do, all the potentiality of us actually stepping into and just seeing and doing the things that we said we were going to do together, everything, all of that, I had to grieve as well. Right. So it, it's, it's so many layers. And even as Sabrina was saying, even in a friendship, we think we're just, I think it's so easy to say goodbye, but there's so much memory attached and your brain kind of has to process that in one way, shape or form. It has to let go of not only the, the relationship, but all the memories that was attached to it, all the potential memories that you could have made that you said that you were going to make with these friends or places or things. But in this situation, we're talking about friends. Yeah. But it's it's the interesting thing we talked about is like how right now, a lot of us are moving to evolving on this journey Mm -hmm. and we're grieving our old self. Yeah. The old version of Sabrina, the old version of Katerina, the old version of Lori, the old version of Lynn. All of these old versions, and everyone else is watching, Horna, I can go on, everybody, <laughs> Carol, and I, all the people, it's like, it's a deep grief that's innate, that you we, we don't even fully understand what it is. Mm. And, it, that, and that's what sh- keeps showing up, you know? So to me, like, I can only talk from experience of grief from uh, physical humans and in those physical humans when they left the earth there was a lot of blame like i blame myself because i could have done something more i you know i i never blamed the person but i blame mostly myself right and there was shame and there was guilt of Mm. what could i have done like what could she have done in that relationship that could have changed maybe because she could have had that baby or Mm. she you know like that there's this whole, all these human emotions that take place, right? But it, they're just ego, right? They're just emotions, but they're they're meant to be felt, of course. But it's um, I feel when you're grieving any any form of grief, um, you tend to drown in a lot of these emotions, mm-hmm. and these emotions can take forever to release from your body. Because I I I thought I was like, oh yeah, I'm good, I'm good. No, man, like <laughs> it's a recurrence, you know, it comes back. The, the, like the memory is stuck in our, en- the, the energy is stuck in our vessel. And it's the, the true forgiveness of, of um, self and of that person, mm. right? Because there's a moment where you do like blame the pe- person, let's say, or you blame God. You blame mm-hmm. the universe for taking this person away from you or for, for them. You know, it's always like it's easy to blame another instead of actually just seeing it as an experience on mm-hmm. your journey. Attaching ourselves to the possibilities, the ideas, the illusion, right, that we have created about ourselves, about certain people, about certain events, situations. And it doesn't mean that it's not real in this 3D experience. It's real. You're feeling it. It's something that's actually happening. But at a deeper level, if you can't let it go, then you're attaching yourself to that image, to that, to to a memory. And, and it's really easy to become a victim hmm. of the memory, yeah, of the grief. Right. And, and I almost feel like the the program, a lot of our programs are set that way. Like, yes, you need to feel guilty. Like th- this is why, like when you people die, like uh, this is why I love the Irish. I, I think there's uh, even uh, some Caribbean countries do this when they die. When someone dies, they have a wake, but they have like music and whatever alcohol. They're celebrating the life mm. of the person who yeah. left. Beautiful. Instead of a freaking Italian way where it's like, oh, feel sorry for me, victim mode, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm going to dress in black and oh my God, poor me. And it's like, no, man, that's the that's a lot of the programming that's happened like within us is that that's why we're not, we. I, that's why grief for me is, is one of, is really important to uh, work through. It's, it's work that we need to really fully, um, love, 
You know, we need to love all of the feelings that come up when it comes up, when it's your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your grandparents, your whoever it is, children, whatever it is. I don't, don't you feel like, I feel like there's like, um, they keep us in this like low dense energy. Well, who they, who's they, Sabina? I like, it's like a, like it's systemic almost, I feel. It's like, yeah, okay, you know, let's go through the seven steps or the five steps mm -hmm. and here's some drugs to keep you going. And he, like, it's, and it's always like, I don't know. For me, it's like living. Maybe the it's religion movie. that becomes part of it too. You know? But for me, it's like living the, the fullness of that present moment. The grief for me is like, can you, like, as you were speaking and you were saying to actually go through it, go through the grief and go through the emotions that come up. It, to me, it sounded like be in the present moment. It's, it's kind of bringing you in a present moment state. But if you're fully present in that moment, you don't have any more residual emotions anymore. It, it, it technically grieving is about letting go. That's the way I see it. It's the ultimate letting go. Yeah, but if you keep yourself in blame mode, shame mode, victim guilt mode, mode, feeling sorry for yourself, victim mode, well then you're not letting go. You're holding on again. It comes back to this idea of not even idea. It comes back to attaching yourself to an image, a storyline that you've been talking about. And the storyline, I mean, I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna say it again. The storyline is only there to protect you from an emotion that you don't want to feel. And a lot of the times, the stories that are around grief, like she was saying has to do with shame, has to do with blame. I could have done it. And if you can't, even if you're blaming and pointing the finger at somebody else, the reality is you're probably pointing that finger back at yourself because everything's just a mirror, right? That person is reflecting to you how you feel about yourself, about that grief, about that person that you're holding on to, that memory that you're holding on to. So if there's a storyline that keeps popping up, what is the emotion underneath it that is trying to express itself, that's trying to release itself from your body? Because it gets triggers, we get triggered just to allow that to officially let go. It's the ultimate letting go. That's the way I see grief. It's not easy, though, because we're not programmed yeah. to point the finger and to to. To not hold on to feel it. these emotions and hold on to it. Yeah, exactly. or, be, or really programmed to hold on to it and feel bad about it, mm. like always. And like I know that I go back to any kind of religion. A religion wants to keep you there and make you feel bad about the dead and the dead and the dead. And for me, the dead is not dead, mm. right? It's like you're you're grieving an old self, but the se the old self is still there. It's just that you're in a different frequency now, so you it's there but this new frequency doesn't it doesn't match to the new version of you right mm. it's like that old person that person that died is in that frequency but now we're in a different frequency so we you know that's that's how i feel it that's how we have to look at it and when i look at it like that maybe it's me making myself feel better you know that my my sister is in that other frequency i can't see her yet oh she's in higher frequency 100 percent <laughs> so i'm not there yet right or your brother or your whatever Definitely. That's a good one. Yes. They are in a higher frequency than us. Technically speaking. Technically yeah. speaking. Technically so speaking. we're not there yeah. yet. So we're going to get there soon. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Actually so really grie why are we grieving for that person? Right? In mm -hmm. the end, like, why are we grieving for that relationship? It was the best thing that ever happened. It we wasn't supposed to happen. You know, and like, I don't want to yeah. bring, I don't want to always bring up frequencies and vibration because it could trigger people too. But maybe we're not at this, at this right level to be, we're not there. We're not mm -hmm. where we're supposed, we're not aligned. I really like how you said to be happy for those relationships that didn't work because maybe they weren't even supposed to work. Maybe they weren't mm -hmm. even supposed to be a relationship, but you made it a relationship. Yeah. And you were like, the fact that you were able to turn it into a relationship is a blessing in itself. Okay. That blessing turned out to be many different blessings of lessons <laughs> that sometimes we haven't fully processed and we still need time to contemplate. But it's turning us into the people that we are meant to step into. Right. Right. Again, it comes back to what have you been asking the universe? Have you been asking for more strength, more courage, more, more awareness? 
more consciousness, well, here's your opportunity. And a relationship, I feel like, is the one that mm. cuts the deepest because it's the one that technically we're more intimate with and therefore more vulnerable. And vulnerability in itself, it's like removing the armor mm. to actually be with someone. You have to remove the armor to be vulnerable, to allow that person to see you and see the parts of you that you haven't even accepted about yourself. 100%. Awesome. Right? And it's, it's like a conscious effort when mm. you're in a relationship. You know, like when it's someone that dies in your life, well, it's, it's just it's, it's a natural state of being. But you're in a, in, when you're in a relationship, a friendship, or like romance or whatever, it's a chosen energy, time, mm. memories that you're creating. You're choosing to do this, right? Mm. And, and then maybe, who knows, you know, if the universe came in and was like, no, what are you, what are you guys doing? And we're like, no, 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 no. So I'm stubborn. I'm going to stay in this 10-year mm. relationship even though he abuses me or even though she does this or you know, like we mm. always give excuses for things. And the universe is like, yo, no. <laughs> and it's so easy. And it, you can just see how easy it is to blame ourselves yeah. for a relationship that we have intentionally chosen to be in intentionally chosen to give our time in intentionally chosen to get give hurt resources in like, it's like an investment we feel like it's an investment and we're like oh we should get something back out of it even if i'm not like it's like we think staying in it is going to give that how do you call it? The E R O I, the R O I, R O I, return on investment. <laughs> but even when we we're not, we're like being so stubborn in something about it because if we let go, that means we fucked up, we did something wrong, and then it's harder to face our shame and blame for ourselves for choosing this because it is a choice. So even if the other person messed up or wasn't honest or yeah, wasn't whatever. was deceitful, you still chose to be there. You still chose to, let's say, not see the red flags. And th those are the ones that hurt the most because it's like we feel something's wrong. We see something's not right. Something's not in alignment, but we decide to be brush it off and be like, oh, oh I'm maybe a survivor. It's just I'm strong. I'm a hero and a savior. Or oh, just, I'm or just we them, don't want to. We I'm going to give them the bottom of the benefit of the yeah. doubt. Maybe or we just want to face it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe we just want to face it. Face a lot of the times. How many times have we talked in our conversations where it's like, I'm going to walk around eggshells around this person mm -hmm. because I don't want to deal with their backlash. Deal. I don't want to deal with their anger. Right. How many times have we said that? We've all said that. This is like yeah. I said, a part of the human experience. But then, how are we not like we're not being authentic? In our approach and then we're expecting others to be authentic they know they're not going to be authentic because you're not even being authentic so of course they're going to show their inauthenticity by lashing out at you lashing out exactly <laughs> but that's the and that's the part of the griefing grief grieving yeah. process as well it's like looking at that relationship and being okay and not like What's not paying attention not not spending too much time on the whys and why I didn't, why I should have, mm -hmm. I could have, I would have, like she said. And like, just look at it for what it was. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not, and it, it's not. So there's nothing to do now. So why are we still holding on to it? Mm -hmm. Even like people who have passed on, why, like it's it's okay to keep the beautiful memories of them. Great. But why are we holding on to like the shame or the blame or the sadness of it because it's not sad to me they're like in a better place like mm -hmm. that re relationship or friendship is in a better place mm -hmm. because they're not in that friendship and relationship that was not aligned anymore and we're we always yeah. want to hold on to something we're all ha holding on holding on holding on and it's not working and it's okay mm -hmm. and it's okay to not be okay that and it's okay to let go yeah because how that. are we going to move into our new version of ourself if we keep holding on? Mm. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're thinking about it. So I'm going to no, 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 continue. Okay. Continue talking. Yeah. On the contrary, that was really nice. It's true. How do you step into the new if you're still holding on to the old? And a lot of the times that's what happens. We Things get removed themselves from our lives. So something better could come in. But then we don't even see the better because we're so focused on what we lost. And again, that's a, that's a part of life. It is what it is. But taking radical responsibility of the situation 
full acceptance of, you know what? It happened. I'm going to accept it without having to really dissect the whys. Can you just accept it radically? Also, like how many times have you been in relationships that you knowingly, you know, mm. it's not right? Yeah. How many? Like, raise your hand, everyone. <laughs> Right. And we just and continue and continue. And then when we're grieving, like then we, we break up this relationship and we are in the grieving process of it. We turned it on us. Mm. Like, well, we're so stupid. Why did we wait? Stay? Nah, nah. But it's not that. It's not for us to be doing that. It's for us to just look at it and say, okay, it just like, thank God we didn't continue this. Right. Like, mm. oh my God, we should have shut it down like five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, one year ago, whatever it is. But now you're like, like why hold on to the, like, oh, I'm like, I should have, could have, would have like, again, we're going to say that again. We, the grieving process allows us to feel the emotions of all of it. The, that's for me the green pause is so beautiful to me i love like moving into a newer version of me because i'm going through the old and i'm i'm forgiving my exes even the yucky ones and i'm forgiving all of them that's the grieving process is to go and face them and say okay thank you for treating me like a piece of shit i love you gone but you're no no longer allowed to be in my space anymore mm, interesting I, the way I see it is also when you have these people come into your life, even if you know they're not good for you, the, are you able to see parts of yourself that you didn't see before? There is many, mm -hmm. there is many relationships that I had where I didn't even realize I, I was so codependent until this person came into my life until I realized like, oh, wow, look how codependent I am. Look how obsessively I'm, I'm looking at this person's text messages or waiting for this person's text mm -hmm. messages, just for example. So it's just like a lot of them, even if you know they're not the right fit, there's something about yourself that you can learn. Like I learned so I, I learned very quickly in my last relationship how much I was a people pleaser and how codependent I was. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity if he did not come into my life and he did the things that he did to actually make me realize oh wow and mm -hmm. then to let it go and then to grieve that part of myself because that part of myself was trying to protect me in one way shape or form because that's what i thought i needed to do probably when i was a kid mm -hmm. when i couldn't control also, they're all lessons too mm -hmm. like you know that it's like it's it's such a very it's very interesting thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. it's good it's like uh a lot of grieving brings up like she said things from your childhood, from your maybe even old lifetimes that you don't even know. And it could even bring up things um, that are happening now in your life that are needing needing to be cut off or needing to be mm. moved away from, right? And it, it's showing up however it's showing up. But like a lot of us recognize grief as in sadness, right? A little bit of hurt and a little bit of betrayal and a little bit of that. Hmm. And it's just to, uh, to, instead of looking at it as like a, like a, a sad thing, look at it as like, oh, wow, I'm evolving. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'm moving into to a different frequency or moving an alignment forward. or I'm just moving forward. Yeah. Moving forward from something that no longer works for me or serves me or just, you know, going from a scared state to maybe a courageous state or from a, a victim state to a, a neutral state. It doesn't even have to be something in, in regards to empowered, but that neutrality of, Oh, it is what it is. It is what it is. And just by uh, seeing that it's easy to, or at least easier to let go. I feel like, you know, in the last episodes, we've said how a big part of this experience is to learn how to love unconditionally, especially yourself, and to trust the universe, especially yourself. And letting go is a big part of that. Letting go is huge. It's just how do you let go? Like, how do you guys let go? Right? How do, how do you, how, what is the best way for you to let go of these people, places, and things, especially when they don't serve you? And why are we holding on so hard like how, why are we holding on to an image that no longer fits 
who we are right now, right now. And uh, preventing us from stepping into a better image or a, just a bigger better version, better version, you know, so it's, and I'm, I'm still going through that right now in the last couple of weeks. It's been, I'm still going through that. I'm still experiencing grieving, but in different states, right? Grieving of the communities that no longer are in alignment. Grieving a part of me that might be a hypocrite in the stuff that I'm saying or doing, right? These, And these are all based on the different experiences that I have with specific people. So I don't know why I brought up the the the, the hypocrisy, but well, it is it was something that needed to be cleared. It probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like we're, we've been all over the place here. So like there's a lot yeah. of clearing is being done right yeah. here. A lot of yeah. clearing right But now. like uh, I want to bring up also um this since I have way too much experience about grieving people that were existent on this earth. Um you know, it's 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 easy to say, oh, you know, like stop grieving the people, you know, like stop attaching to them. Like, you know, I lost my mother, my sister, my aunt, my cousin when he was young. Like I lost a lot of significant people in my life. And um, I, I when I was young and 17 years old, when I lost my mom, I, I did feel sorry for myself. I played victim man to the freaking nth degree. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, feel sorry for me. You know, I used to bring it up all the time and everybody, like, oh, you know, and I lived like that for a while because it was, I was learning from everyone around me. That's everybody was like that. My father, everybody, you know, which is, I'm not blaming anybody, but. <laughs> and it's, as I moved through this journey, I realized when my sister passed seven years ago, it was a completely different way of grieving, right? And and um, and now I'm on this journey and I, I'm not attached to her physicality as much as I was with my mother, right? Mm. Or I, the role. Now I saw it as more like my sister is done with this earth plane and she needed to move on. But I, by me, like I've been, I, because I speak to my sister, she's like, can you stop holding on to me? Cause I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Right. And it's like, you're right. You know, it's like, what are we holding on to? We're just holding on to like a, an image mm -hmm. of this person who sure. doesn't exist anymore. But her memories are forever in my in my heart. Like all your memories are forever in your hearts with your loved ones that have passed on. But I don't, I'm not sad anymore. You know, of, of course I say to you sometimes that I am sad, but you know, it's because I miss the physical of her, but I'm happy if I'm, I'm uh, ultimately Detaching. happy where she is. Mm. So who am I to bring her back onto this earth? And like when most of us want to leave this earth, right? <laughs> like, come on, you come on to this earth. I wonder, you know, it's, it's still because we want to leave this earth because we're still taking this life too seriously, right? That's what I wonder sometimes. I feel like I'm still taking life too seriously. And sometimes the grieving, if we get too attached with the victim states, a lot of the times because we're still taking this life way too seriously. Yeah. Instead of just enjoying this life for what it is, it's an experience. Um, yeah, it, it, it literally is just and an I, experience. I really feel like some people are not even here to learn lessons. They're here to just have fun and just enjoy life, Yeah, which most of us are here to do. I feel like there's not enough fun, and that doesn't mean you don't feel the feels, but we're not here to hold on to the to to feelings. We're here to allow them to be energy in motion, emotions, right? Yeah. And that's why we want to empower with this grief. We want we didn't want to talk about grief as in the sadness of it, and like we want to talk about it as a as a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, it's it like is. a it's a departure from an old um, person, job, relationship. You grieve all of it. You you you, mm -hmm. you stay at a job for ten years, and then all of a sudden you're fired or you quit. Even if you quit. You grieve those 10 years that like mm. you put your passion and Hearts. heart so in your hard work and labor into something. Yeah, there true. is a process of grief. Yeah, there's a process of grief. You go on vacation and you like loved every single minute, but you're grieving on you as you're coming home. You're like, oh my god, right? There's that's grief, it is actually, but it's a beauty in it's, grief. It's the best release, just it's like love it, like the ultimate release. The ultimate letting go. Find the love in the grief. If you can. So if you can. Hard.
but also feel the anger and feel the feel the feel it all. Mm. But don't sit in it. Yeah. Be it. Try to do know? something creative, you know? That's been a big one on for me. It's to find creative outlets for this grief, for the emotions. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could just be you moving and dancing in weird positions or just scribbling, right? Just scribbling. We think that the creative arts the has to look perfect. That's the whole point. It's, it doesn't have to look perfect. It just has to be an expression of that emotion at that very moment, the, an expression of anger at that very moment. And it could be anything. I, and I, re I recently went to a funeral, which was not very nice, of a 26-year-old. But I had to mm -hmm. say during the funeral... <laughs> I, I do. I have to express this because I thought that was like amazing. They had like uh, Pink Floyd, "Wish You Were Here," which like everybody was crying like a baby, and mm. like the whole song they played it. And then when it was the last thing, when they were taking his coffin away, he they played Eminem. Which one? <laughs> Eight Mile. The really? It was like -na -na -na. I was like, yo, man, yeah. and everybody was not like uh, it was. It was is a way to celebrate him you know mm. in many uh, different versions exactly and i lo i loved it and i was like wow well, man you know that's you know and all these old ladies were like what the hell is going on but <laughs> that's funny all italian old lady <laughs> yeah, italian and haitian they were both oh. he was half and half but it was funny i was laughing anyways <laughs> just to say you know grief let's in let's um Celebrate. Find a way to celebrate your grief. Mm. The way we celebrate, like it's actually it's really kind of interesting. This, like, celebrate your anger. Mm. Yeah, you know, celebrate the fear. Yeah, I like that actually. It's a, a kind of a. It's like it's a great way to to trigger your mind. You know, like fuck up your mind a little bit. You're like, oh, today I'm afraid. Oh my god, I'm gonna celebrate it. You know, mm. your mind's gonna be like, yo, what is happening? <laughs> But that is it's all your mind your mind's responses to like, fear is like <gasps> glitching it. So if you like um like a glitch in the you, matrix, you play with it, you know, you change up the algorithm. Mm. Yeah, it's actually very, very smart. I like that a lot. I think so too. I like yeah. it. Okay, we're we'll seeing this is how we, we find out. <laughs> yeah. Celebrate your sadness. I'm gonna have to try that out. Yeah. Honestly, celebrate. Celebrate the hardship, celebrate the sadness, celebrate the good times, everything. Interesting. Like yeah, because it's one thing to stand in awareness, mm. but it's another thing to have fun with it. Yeah. That's the ultimate release, too. Like, I mean, you have grief. It's the ultimate release. But then fun, it's like the celebration of grief. If you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We're going off for the next week. <laughs> celebration of anger, emotions. But, yeah. I think that's good. The key takeaways. We didn't write any key takeaways. We forgot but, to write um, key takeaways. But matter. I mean, how do, how do you grieve, right? Like, how do you is, grieve? The, um, where in your life are you still holding on to grief? Hmm. Or people. Of a, of a past. Or people, places, things, exactly. Or where are you still holding on to an old version of yourself that, oh, uh, I used to do this when I was younger, right? Or I used to, mm. I used to play this i used to be with this person like, oh my god my relationship 10 years ago was amazing what are we doing are there why are we holding on, on? Exactly. <laughs> right grieve that shit allowing and let it go new. yeah not allowing something new to come in like to surprise you right because when, when you're holding on something you can't allow the universe to surprise you with something better that's the thing how do you handle your grief too like what do you do when you are grieving do you hold space for yourself? Do you distract yourself? Um, do you avoid feeling the pain? Do you feel it physically? Mm. Does it come in tears? Does it come in um, anguish? You know, does it come in, you know, there's a lot. We feel grief shows up in many forms. Mm -hmm. So if you can pinpoint it and you can stand in the awareness of it and celebrate it, you got this. And how would you celebrate it? I, that I would like to yeah. know. I need kind of pointers for that. How would you actually celebrate grief? If you could celebrate it, if it's something that you are thinking about right now, or are you already celebrating grief? And if so, how are you celebrating grief? I think that's good for this week. Yeah. Uh, we are doing the Hermit on Saturday for all those who are interested in 
just a mini tarot series collection of major arcanas where we dive into every single one. And um, that's it. That's it. That's it for today. Yeah, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Grieve away. Uh -oh. Ciao, guys. Love you. Bye.